So, four or five exponential and logarithmic models. We have five models we're going to focus on growth and decay, Gaussian, uh, logistic, and logarithmic. Okay, growth um, is simply y equals a times e to the bx. Decay has a negative exponent, that's how you know the difference. Um, Gaussian has a fractional exponent, an exponent raised to an exponent. Who is that? He's a mathematician, he's pretty famous for figuring out all this. Logistic um, is a fraction with an exponent in the denominator spot, and logarithmic has two different kinds because you can use natural log or you can use log with a base of 10. These are the rough drafts of what they look like. This would be an exponential, what type of um, growth. Growth. growth? Okay, this is growth. What is this one then below it? Decay. Decay. Okay. What is this? Yes. <laughs> yes. Gaussian. It's what? Gaussian. Gaussian. It is a Gaussian. Which a Gaussian um, model then is going to be used a lot of times in um, bell curves. Okay. So that's what that looks like. What is this one here? Growth. Logistic. Logistic. <coughs> and what about these two? Rhythmic. Logarithmic. Logarithmic. Okay, with a base. One's got a natural base and one's got a base of 10. Um, Okay, so you're going to have to be able to identify these because um, in our graphing calculator when we put data in, we're going to have to be able to identify which one we're using in order to get our equation off of our data. Okay, so let us start by putting um, this table in and then we're going to figure out an exponential growth model. So how do I put data into my table? Oh wait, I know this. You have to go do something with edit plots. Yeah. Right? You have to go to stat. Oh, stat. And then you need to clear list one and clear list two. Yeah. And then you got to go back into stat and edit it. Yes. Stat. You have to clear list one and clear list two. Done. And then you got to go back in and you got to put in the data. I personally am just putting in. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 for L1. Um, if you do the whole year, you just have to remember that for when you put in your um, rate and your, um, your window, when you set your window. Does that mean make sense, Jeremiah? Okay, so put in this data for me. What do you mean if you want to expand your window? Uh, then you, it depends what your numbers are if you're making it smaller or bigger. You can add side. <coughs> it's a nine. Nine, four, three. Six, nine, four, three. Oh, I have to do the Wait, do I have to put 2,000 in or just say? Mm -hmm. You can put just seven. And then when you set your window, you're going to have to decide what it looks like. Um, what scale factor do I want to count by? There you go. That's beautiful. So then when you go to put this data in, after you get it in, you've got to make sure that you have your plot turned on, your plot one turned on. So we go to a second y equals and turn on your stat plot. Yes? Then you have to make sure your window is set correctly. Um, if you did like I did, and you just put in 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, what is your um, x minimum? 12, 5. 5, go a little lower than 7, 5, 0, whatever you want. What's your maximum? 15, maybe. 15, and what are you going to count by? 1's. 1's, good. Over here, what is your minimum? 6,000. 6, okay, you put 6,000, that's fine. What's your maximum? 8,000. 
and 8,000, it's gotta be more than seven, but yeah, so 8,000. I counted by 50s in that range just because it's a decent number to count by to that, okay? <clears throat> you can count by less than 50 if you want. And you should get a nice little scatter plot, yes? <laughs> Scatterplot was turned on. Come on, Jenner. Silly. Nice little scatterplot. You have to go to second, y equals, and then you turn it on. You turn on the L1. Okay. Now, this one's an exponential growth model, an exponential growth. How did we figure out where the equation is again in this? Go back to stack. Good, Jenner. Go back to stack. Go over to calc. Line we don't want line. We want what? Four. What type of model do we want? Uh, exponential. Exponential. Okay. So if you want an exponential, you're going to go all the way down zero. to zero, which is exponential regression. And you're going to press enter and enter and enter until it says calculate. And then you're going to get something that looks like this should be y equals a times b to the x, yes? And a is 6, 1, 2, 8.05, something along those lines. And b is 1.01 to the x. So then we go into y equals and we plug that equation in, yes? 6, 1, 2, 8. Point oh five times 1.01 to the x. And we press graph. And it should go through your dots or pretty close to those dots on your scatter plot. So you're going to have to come up with exponential growth and exponential decay models off of data sets. <coughs> Okay. Any questions on that information? That's stuff we've done before, except for we're not using linear regression or quadratic regression. We're using exponential regression feature. Okay. Um, the blue says, in a research experiment, a population of fruit flies is increasing according to the um, law of exponential growth. After two days, there are 100 flies, and after four days, there are 300 flies. How many flies will there be after five days? What do we need to come up with? A formula. You need to come up with a formula, okay. What does it say that it's, um, the law is? It's what? The law of exponential growth. What's the formula for exponential growth? Y equals A, E to the BX, yes? Okay, can we plug in some of this information? If we can make two equations, we can then combine those two equations to make one. We have two different um, amounts that we can work with. After two days, there are 100 flies, yes? And after four days, there are 300 flies. So if I set up two separate equations, I can then plug them, substitute them in, and solve for A, B, or whatever it is I need to solve for. Okay? So the first equation I'm going to set up is 100 equals A, E to the 2 times B. Okay? Two days, 100 flies. The second equation you're going to set up is 300 equals a e to the 4b. Now, if we solve one of those equations um, for a, we can plug it into the a of the other equation and then substitute and figure things out. Okay? So if we go ahead and make this 100 over e to the 2b equals a, I can then plug this information in here, and then I can solve for what B is and figure out what's going on. So 300 equals 100 over E to the 2B times E to the 4B, yes? Yep. Thanks, 
Now, when you have an exponent on top of a, an exponent that's on the bottom with the same basis, what do you do with the exponent? Subtract. So what's 4b minus 2b? So you get 300 equals 100e to the 2b. What do you do from there? Divide by 100. Okay? When I divide by 100, I get 3, correct? So I get 3 equals e to the 2b. How do you get rid of e? Ln. Ln. Good. Ln 3. So then ln 3 equals ln um, e to the 2b. This cancels, right? So 2b equals ln 3. Now what? Divide by 2. And b equals ln 3 over 2, correct? Okay. What are you going to do um, with that? Plug it back in, yes? And then you can solve from there. So if I take ln 3 over 2 equals b, or I can change this to say um, 1 half of ln 3. That might be an easier way to plug it back in, because a half and divide by 2 is the same thing. Okay. And let's plug it back in to this equation so we can solve for a. Okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to plug it in for b so I can solve for a. 100 over e times 2 to the 1 half ln 3 equals a. What happens to that 2 and that 1 half? Yes, <laughs> they cancel. They cancel. So I can plug this in and I can say 100, and I can say divided by e. I got 33.3. You got what? 33.3? So then A equals 33 and a third, because it's 0.33 repeated. So now I can plug that in to my equation, okay, because I wanted to know after five years. So I can plug it into this original equation of Y equals 33.3 repeated E to the BX, and it wanted to know after five days what that would look like. So five would go into the... Um, x spot, correct? And we would solve from there. <coughs> and the b spot is the ln3 divided by 2, yes? Which is 0.549, so you get this. 0.549 times 5. So 33.3 repeated. And then E times 0.549. And you should get 518, about 518 flies. You're calculating how many flies there will be after five days. So you had to create two equations, solve one for A, plug it in to figure out what B is, and then plug A and B back into your original equation, and then use the data from that to solve. Yes. This is just building off of when we used to do the, when we used to know why and figure out. Correct. X is, X is the five days, however many days you're doing. That's what you're plugging in. That's what the information you're giving to plug in. Okay, and then the last um, thing we'll go over today before we start homework is um, 
this formula here. Let's talk about this a little bit. Let me re-put this up. I think it says x is less than or equal to 800. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So this problem says, <laughs> this is about PSAT scores or SAT scores. It says, in 2013, the School Elastic Aptitude Test, the SAT mathematics scores for college-bound seniors, roughly followed this normal distribution, meaning it, um, it was 0.0034e to the negative x minus 514 squared over 27,848. Okay? If you plug that in, that was their mean score. Okay? Where x is the SAT score for mathematics. Use a graphing utility, graph this function, and estimate the average SAT mathematics scores. What would I have to do to graph this in my graphing calculator? What do you have to do? Okay, so you need to plug that equation into the y equals, yes. And then what does your window have to look like? gives me a window for my x already. The 200, because it has to be 200 is less than or equal to my x, and x is less than or equal to 800. So my window is going to be 200 to 800, or 100 to 900, because I want to see that range. Okay? And I count by, I don't know, fives or tens. And then your y should be zero to whatever, because you can have um, zero to a thousand, I guess, I would put in. When you plug that in, you should get a model that looks like this. What type of model is that? Yeah, the Gaussian model. Okay, And that should make sense because here's the deal. When you are working with scores okay, in SAT, this should be your highest point, should be your turning point. okay? Because the average person, person should fall within that, like, average C range or whatever it is, right, is what they're saying. So you're just going to plug that in and you're going to make sure that your window is what's set correctly. Um, we're going to stop there and tomorrow we'll pick up with um, logistic growth and logarithmic growth. <coughs> yes, you can take a picture of this.